Hello ladies and gents, it's Hagbard Selene here on another beautiful afternoon, and I have before me, well, another video from the Merciful Servant. They are exactly... Hmm. Hello ladies and gents, Hagbard Selene here, and I have before me a video from one of our favorites, the Merciful Servants. It is another beautiful piece of Islamic propaganda that basically says everything you've ever heard that's bad about Islam is totally wrong. It's entitled, Five Misconceptions About Islam. In reality, it's five pieces of misinformation about Islam. As an overview, the claims are as follows. 1. Islam was not spread by the sword. 2. Islam worships another god besides the traditional Judeo-Christian god. 3. It does not recognize Jesus. 4. Women are not oppressed in Islam. And 5. Muslims are not terrorists. Now, listen. I reversed the order because it's the order that they actually show in the video. Of course, <laughs> as far as they're concerned, the top two of importance are women are not oppressed in Islam because as a misconception, quote-unquote, in the West, it deeply, deeply makes it more difficult for Islam to spread in the West if it's seen as being oppressive to women. And, of course, the number one on their list is Muslims are not terrorists or extremists. I will be attempting to provide something of a counterpoint to these assertions. I hope you all enjoy the following five pieces of misinformation about Islam. Oh, that's not what we're doing. I misread this entirely. Top five misconceptions about Islam. All right, Arab MS San, go ahead and just fucking put some inflection on that voice next time. Number five, Islam was spread by the sword. Oh, I know. Spreading your religion by the sword would be evil, and the world's most perfect religion could never do anything like that. I'm sure you keep all of this memorabilia around that was owned by the Prophet and, you know, his immediate followers, that it has no significance whatsoever. The swords themselves are just symbols of purity or something. They're not symbols of violence, and they certainly weren't used to spread a religion by violence. That, that's insane. That's an insane misconception about Islam. There's no record in history that shows people being forced by sword point to convert to Islam. Muslims ruled Arabia for over 1,400 years. Sure, off and on, through various struggles with the local minority and ethnic populations, as well as other religious groups like Buddhists and Zoroastrians, but Go on. Of course, you say rule, but let's presume it wasn't rule by any sort of force for the first time in human history, right? Yet today, there are over 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. Uh, yes, there are, and many of them have had to leave the Middle Eastern, predominantly Muslim-ruled areas because they are mistreated. If the Muslims had used a the sword, there would not have been a single Arab who have remained Christian. Those are interesting terms from supposedly non-violent people. The only way that there could possibly be even a single Coptic Christian Arab left would be if the Islamic people hadn't chosen to use their given power to wipe them off the face of the planet, right? Another example is India. Muslims ruled India for over a thousand years. If they had wanted, they had the power to convert each and every non-Muslim of India to Islam. First and foremost, I'm sure that there's a little country called Pakistan that we should be talking about right now. But aside from that, if that's the case, how would you explain this map of the Roman Empire and the fact that they didn't forcibly convert everyone they ran into? Because it's inconvenient for an empire to deal with. Empire's gonna empire, dog. But today, more than 80% of the population of India are non-Muslims. Again, would we like to discuss Pakistan? All these non-Muslim Indians are bearing witness today that Islam was not spread by the sword. This of course presumes that when Islam is spread by the sword, it has a 100% success rate. Consider that. If one considers a small number of Muslims who initially spread Islam to the west, all the way from Spain and Morocco and into the east from India and China, one would realize that such a small group of people could not force others to be members of a religion against their will. If you look at the small number of Anglo-Saxons that were capable of spreading imperial 
Europe from America to China and Japan, Australia, South America, Africa, you'd realize it's impossible for the white man to instill his will unless the various ethnic makeups of these other regions decide that they will, by their own free will, submit to the white man, you see. Am I right? It is also interesting to note that when the Mongols invaded and conquered large portions of the Islamic Empire, they themselves embraced the religion of Islam. Always remember, he said it, not me. A band of ravaging warlords preferred your religion. This is considered a good thing somehow. Number 4. Muslims believe in a different god. Ah, yes, now begins the portion of the program that I call the counter-conversion program. It's the part where they try and tell Jews and Christians that they should take the final step and just join Islam. I know you're out there and I know you're rare, but any of the Christian subscribers I have gained in the past, feel free to comment about this. Some non-Muslims incorrectly believe that Muslims worship a god different than Jews and Christians. This might be due to the fact that Muslims refer to God as Allah. Actually, it has deeper theological roots than that, but I'm not going to get into that here. Just look up the inherent differences and the fact that in the Christian and Judaic tradition, they took in certain older pagan traditions, and Islam basically represents a hyper, hyper regionalized version of these, wherein they took just that area's pagan information in. Other than that, there's the whole sun, moon, god thing that we can debate to high heaven. It's a relevant theology. In actuality, Muslims worship the god of Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. The word Allah is simply the Arabic word for Almighty God. The word Allah is very unique. Nothing else except God can be called Allah. The term has no plural or gender. This shows its uniqueness when compared with the word God which can be made plural, gods or feminine goddess. Christian Arabs also refer to God as Allah. Cool, irrelevant wordplay. Nice how you don't make any points there, especially on any sort of theological level. Number three, Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Holy shit, guys, really two deconversionary portions in one video? That's gutsy and it's also rather presumptuous that you know, the people watching it that you're sending this message to give any fuck whatsoever about another Abrahamic religion. Many people are amazed to find out that according to Muslim belief, Jesus is one of the greatest messengers of God. One cannot be Muslim without believing in the virgin birth and the many miracles of Jesus. Yes, yes, you co-opted aspects of Christianity the same way Christianity co-opted aspects of Judaism. Congratulations, you're a copy of a copy of a copy. You're like the Abrahamic religious version of the movie Inception, and frankly, you make about as much sense. Jesus is also mentioned in many verses of the Qur'an and is often used as an example of good virtue and character but not quite as virtuous or good in character as the pedophile warlord Muhammad. However, the main difference between Christianity and Islam is that Muslims do not believe that Jesus was God or the Son of God. Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet and a messenger of God. Again, I'm not wholly sure how those last two were supposed to help you when having a discussion with someone like me or mine, but hey. Whatever, man, if you think you're going to convert someone from one Abrahamic religion to another on a regular basis, you have fun. Number 2. Muslim Women Are Oppressed One of the most disturbing misconceptions is the negative portrayal of women in Islam. We all know this to be complete bullshit, as I already did a video on this particular subject. The Prophet Muhammad was the perfect feminist figure. We've been educated, sir, thank you. Namely, that Islam degrades and oppresses women. This misconception is due to the negative culture and traditions that people all over the world still hold on to. Oh, so you're just going to kick dirt up and muddy the waters here and pretend like there's absolutely nothing at all to do with Islam here, huh? You know what? 
fuck it, let's hold that to be true. Let's presume that this behavior has nothing to do with Islam. Now I would question you, if Islam is the religion that is perfect for the world and would never allow for bad things to happen, how and why is it that in predominantly Islamic countries, these are the practices? Unfortunately, these traditions sometimes overshadow the Islamic teaching and people from the outside believe that the traditions and Islam are the same when in reality, they are not. Again, Islam is perfect. Islam rules majority in these countries. How do these practices persist? Oh, and when we're talking about that, let's, let's of course just forget the fact that in the country that contains the two most holiest cities of Islam, Mecca and Medina, this kind of thing occurs. <laughs> nah, 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 I know, those, those men weren't Muslims, I understand, my bad, they, they, just, they just live in, you know, one of the largest Islamic countries in the world. For example, women in pre-Islamic Arabia had almost no rights. They were viewed as objects and were constantly humiliated. Their purpose was nothing more than to obey men and have children for him. When a female baby was born, it was considered a disgrace to the family and they were often buried alive. Islam brought positive change to Arabia. People who embraced Islam had to let go of these harmful cultural practices and women were finally given the rights and respect that they deserved. <laughs> Sure, sure, my bad entirely. Number 1. Muslims are terrorists and extremists This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Hey, 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 whoa now, to be fair, the governments in which you occupy are scared of Muslim extremism, alright? It's not just the media, sir. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people, it is labeled as a hate crime, but when a Muslim opens fire on anybody, it is quickly regarded as terrorism? No, we tend to label it as terrorism when they say that they're doing it in the name of Allah to spread their religion or to stop other people from insulting their religion. Either way, it is indeed the act of an angry Muslim who is committing terrorism to change the ideology of a region through fear. Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to gain followers and attention when many of their practices go against the teachings of Islam. How exactly would that occur if not by reading the book one could indeed justify those actions? Again, this religion sounds less and less perfectly handed down by a god every time you guys operate apologetics upon it. Interesting. Islam does not support terrorism under any circumstances. Unless, of course, you're being suppressed from practicing your religion, I know. Terrorism goes against every principle in Islam, and if a Muslim engages in terrorism, he is not following Islam. Uh, yeah, I know. As soon as he reaches into his jacket and pulls the cord on the suicide vest and goes He's not a Muslim anymore, he just died in the name of Islam and is now a martyr for Islam, but he didn't die a Muslim somehow. I can't explain it, it's madness. Islam prohibits Muslims from attacking or killing any innocent person. Allah says, whoever kills a person... Let just... me guess, the misquote about the Jews. Yep. Alright, that's just about enough bullshit out of you, merciful servant. I think that we've perhaps seen the final video that I will do from your particular production company, unless you guys come up with some real fucking data, because frankly speaking, this could have been called the list of five things I've heard every Muslim apologist complain about. I mean, literally, this could just be, hey, this is a beginner's guide to know what an Islamic apologist is going to win John about long before he opens his mouth because these are the five major talking points. Ironically, the two in the middle appeal only to people that already follow an Abrahamic religion. So they're completely worthless to someone like me. That being said, I hope everyone enjoyed this five pieces of misinformation about Islam and the constant, constant 
constant portrayal of Islam as this religion of peace, this enlightened movement, this movement that freed women in the Arab Peninsula, this concept that it was never spread by the sword, all of these are just ridiculous statements on the face of them. I mean, just on the sheer face of them. They are ridiculous statements. Anyone who believes that any major movement like Islam had no spread by the sword is delusional. They all did. Every empire spreads by the sword. And guess what? Islam? Just another empire. It's an empire with religious sheen on it, like so many other empires before it. The only difference is, this time, it appears to have stuck, which is highly unfortunate for all of us. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. I will see everyone on Thursday for the podcast and on Friday for my final video of the week. Stay safe out there. Good luck.